Hi, welcome to Community Spotlight. I'm Cheryl Girl, and welcome to our new season. We've got a lot of great shows coming up. We want to make sure that you keep it locked in all season long. And you know what? If you've got an idea for a show, you'd like to be a guest, make sure that you give us a call. Contact Tyrone Chandler or check it out on Access 21. Now today, this beautiful young lady hi. is Chef Mona Arnold. Welcome. Yes. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, where are you from, Chef? I am originally from Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. And I have been here in Charlotte, North Carolina for about 15 years. And you are the owner of? Exclusive Delights. Exclusive Delights. Now, that is, what exactly do you do? Well, um, we offer a variety of things because mm -hmm. I'm a dual degree chef. Mm -hmm. I like so, that, dual degree. Yes, dual degree. I like Girl, to say that too. Right, right. <laughs> exactly, I love my two degrees. Yeah. But I am a dual degree, so what that means is mm -hmm. I graduated as a culinarian. Uh -huh. And then Culinary. I also, right, I went back to, I went to Central Piedmont. I okay. always have to give a shout out to Central Piedmont because they are fabulous. Okay. And I also went to Central Piedmont for pastry, baking pastry arts. Oh, that's, oh, you're talking to a big girl. <laughs> so you handle those sweets. Yes, okay. yes. With you're talking cooking. You are talking my kind of business there. That's what's now, up. Now, Chef Mona, my understanding is that you have come from a history of, of cooks and bakers. Tell me a little bit about how you started cooking and your family history with that. Well, I actually started cooking at the age of nine years old. Nine? Uh, nine years old. Like elementary school yes, nine? Yes, elementary school You're baking nine. cookies for your family. Right. Well, actually, I um, would cook meals <laughs> by the time I got in middle school because really? I just felt like it was a lot of pressure on my parents. Mm -hmm to, you know, coming home from work. So I decided, you know, I'll, I'll have the meals done and I enjoyed it. And uh, my grandmother, she cooked really well. What my, was your grandma's name? My grandmother, Lassie, which was my father's mother. Uh -huh. She baked. Mm -hmm. And then I had my grandma. That old school baking kind of old pound cake, Exactly. The kind when you, you cut a slice and you got the fork and you, you put the crumbs on it, and then you can pick up the crumbs in the back and forth. Yes, Real yes, pound cake. Can yes. you bake like your yes, grandma? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. And now, they can't teach you all that over at CPCC, can they? No, they cannot. Some of that just comes it's, it's through natural. your heritage. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. So now, well, she wasn't the only baker. Who else was baking in your family? I had my Aunt Bessie. Aunt Bessie. And, and Grandma, what was her name again? Grandma Lassie. Grandma then, Lassie, Aunt Bessie. They were the bakers the of bakers. the family. Right. And then With I real had. Real butter. And right. Hand mix and all that. Yes. Did you get to help them and lick the bowl, or were you? Always, I mean, when I was younger, um, I think I was just a little too young at that time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I basically just got a good eyeball. But uh -huh. when, when we were younger, you know, we just couldn't really hang out in with the adults in right. the kitchen or what have you. So I feel like it's in my veins. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's 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 really here. And then my grandmother Hannah. And my grandfather, L.C., they were like cooks. So okay. basically they could cook. So I feel like I got it from different well, um, angles. Yes. So cooking and baking, and, the, and there is a difference. Oh, definitely. There definitely. is a, there's a lot of people right. can cook, but not everybody can bake. Right, right, okay. right. Definitely. So now tell me a little bit about your grandparents who were more the, the, the cooks in the family. My grandfather was a type gentleman that he ate every piece of meat on the chicken. <laughs> besides the feather. <laughs> right. He was yeah. like... He he actually would boil the chicken feet. Oh, and he's okay. like, baby, you don't know how much meat you can get off that chicken. Like the feet has a lot of meat. So okay. he was a type that would break it all the way down. Well, see, he was ahead of the curve because now, not that I, I know anything about cooking, but everybody's talking about, you know, the bone broth now these days. Right. Your granddaddy was already getting the protein exactly. out of the chicken bones. <laughs> exactly. He was already green and recycling. Exactly. Helping y'all get started. Exactly, exactly. So which do you prefer, cooking or baking? I prefer to cook uh -huh. um, because I can definitely get into my element in cooking. Mm -hmm. But baking is just too many individuals. The masses like the baking. Somebody yes. always has a party, anniversary, um, birthday. It's, it's always something going on where the sweets are just more interesting. Yeah, well, you know, everybody wants a cookie. Everybody wants something right. good, just like you said. Now, with your company, Exclusive Delights, you didn't just start off being a, a business owner. How did you make the decision to say, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be a chef. I'm going to be a pastry expert. What made you decide to, to go to culinary school? 
I was actually confused. I was oh, really? very confused. You, it sounds like you all, to me, you sound like you had a mission and a plan, but <laughs> no, I that's did not, not how it really was. No, huh? it was not a mission and a plan. And that's why I always encourage people. Uh -huh. You have to find your passion. And the day that I walked into Central Piedmont, I had no clue what my passion was. You just said, I'm going to go to school. You didn't I'm even going go to school, exactly. Going I just decided that, hey, I have children. And mm -hmm. at the time, they were like in middle school, um, going up into high school. And my thing was, I didn't get a secondary education. <coughs> so uh -huh. I definitely needed them to um, see, you know, see mama make changes and see mom mm -hmm. go out and, and get her degrees and, you know, just... Just Lead going by example. Exactly, exactly. So kids are out doing their thing, and you said, okay, I'm going to go back and do something. I said, I'm doing something. I just can't let my name, our legacy, just, I just end up in the casket, and that's it. I just could, I just could <laughs> okay. not, I could understand, you know, I just couldn't see right. myself. So you knew that there was more. Right, it had to be. I had to carry my name further mm -hmm. somehow, some way. So I um, went to the school, spoke to the counselor. I talk all the time, so I figured I could make a good uh, <laughs> lawyer, or I, I wasn't sure. And so I told him, I said, I'm really confused, but I need to do something. Right. And he said, well, what could you do every day, no matter what? Even if you were just depressed, down and out. And I was like, well, oh. I can cook. I can cook no matter what. Like, even if I don't feel good, I'll get up out of the bed and cook. Okay. And so he was like, that's where you need to go. You need to go to culinary school. Wow. And I said, seriously? And I'm like, so I need to be a chef. <laughs> He's like. So when you said it, did it sound kind of right in your ears? No, it did not. No, 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 because I mean, it just, it wasn't something that I personally thought about every day. I didn't right. see myself in I'm that be suit. A chef. Right, I didn't. So this is kind of before you had like Food Network and. And, you know, now it's very popular. Right, right, right. Everybody's always, you know, like to eat, but now it's, you know, the trend. Exactly. But you, you, I, but I, you know what? I want to say thank you for just being so honest because you were like, I'm, I'm going to go to school and do something. You didn't know what you were going to do, but then it hit you. Yeah. And you, but you still weren't sure. Well, the thing of it is, sometimes it's not up to us what uh -huh. we decide. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I had no clue, and I put it out there in the universe basically asking the higher powers what to do. I know mm -hmm. I wasn't going to just, my life wasn't going to fall by the wayside. So I knew I was going to do something. Mm -hmm. So that was my answer. You know what I'm saying? How right. could I go wrong? I, I asked, I, I went to the school. It wasn't like, you know, I'm just sitting at home on the computer and right. weeks are going by. I put it in the air. I asked when I went, that was my answer. And this is what I'm supposed to do. And here I and am today. <laughs> and there you're doing it. So as a chef, how does that work, you know? Like, what's your what's your day like? Do people book you to cater a party, bake a cake? What's your real day-to-day -day life as, you know, as a chef and as the owner of your own company? Well, for me, being a dual degree. Dual, de dual yes. degree. Girl, Brad. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Wait a minute, and let me just say, it's not only the dual degree, but looking good doing well, it. Well, thank you. Yes, okay, fabulous. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I will say that um, as far as, um, my day-to-day -day routine for me is so sporadic because of the dual degree situation uh -huh. so it's not like somebody will call me for personal chef services mm -hmm. um, I have a client where I go to her house and prepare her meals weekly and then I have people that call me for parties oh okay well see now I have never even heard of that okay I've heard of personal chef and like for a special event but see, we have learned something here. <laughs> this is how the other half was. You can hire a personal chef to just prepare your food for the week. Yes, exactly. Like a sh like a sh like like I'm Oprah, and you come cook my yes, food. Yes, exactly. And it doesn't you doesn't you don't have to be celebrity status mm. for me to do that. I love to deal with everybody, the masses. You know mm. what I'm saying? But um, I have dealt with celebrities as well, and I do deal can with you celebrities. Can drop any names? I can drop a few. Drop some names, please. Yes. We love that. Drop some names. Yes, I have. Um, I've done some things for Ray J and uh, Miss okay. Princess. Oh wow! Um, they, they came here to Charlotte, uh -huh. and I was able to get on their tour bus. And um, my partner and I came up with these rose poppies. So they're like cake pops, and they look like roses. 
Oh, cute. Put the fondant on it so it looks like real. So I she, I gave that to her and some chocolate covered strawberries and she was just like, oh my goodness, like this is so different and it's so good. I like to be like a, a different, like above average, above the norm. Apparently, <laughs> dual yes. degrees. Yes, yes. So the, the rose poppies, can we see pictures of that on your website? Um, The website should have some pictures. I have First, several give us pictures. The website. Okay, it is www.exclusivedelights. Now, dot exclusive, com. how do you spell We're going to spell that with an X. X, no E. X, no, no E. Exclusive Yes, X-C-L-U-S-I-V-E. Exclusive Delights. Delights with an S. So if we wanted to hire you, Chef, we yes. had, as a personal chef or for a special occasion, we could go to the website and get information sure. and see pictures. Right. And they're called poppy cakes? These are rose poppies. Rose so they're like poppies. little cake pops, but they look like roses. That's so, pretty fabulous. Yeah, it, you need a patent now. Okay, don't yeah, steal her right, idea now. Right, right, well, that actually came we'll from my partner. We'll have to take the proof. She <laughs> yeah, said it first. Right, right. Well, I, have, I definitely have them on my social media. Okay. Um, But I do... So now, we follow you on social media. We follow Chef Mona, right. Chef Mona Arnold. Chef I, Mona Arnold. Chef Mona Arnold. Yes. Okay. And I'm on, I'm on um, Facebook. Uh -huh. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Yes. Well, so. cool. So now you said Ray J. Any other names? You oh yes, uh, Samora was the first person I want to say. The comedian. The comedian okay, Samora. Cool. That I did. Um, I did her like a nice little tray when she came to Charlotte. Now she filmed her special here. Was I think it was um, the Chandelier tour or something like that? Were you part of that? A, a couple of years ago. Yes. 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 That is yes. very cool. Because so at the end we all got to go back to the room with her uh -huh. and talk, and they filmed that. So it was really nice. So. With your dual degrees and with your, your business, it I feel like <laughs> you're supposed to be doing something on TV because you can't just be all cute uh, like this up all under the chef coat. <laughs> right. That you, have you ever thought about competing on like maybe Chopped or anything like that? I actually have. Um, you've, wait, you've been on Chopped? No, I haven't. You've no, 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 no. I've thought it. about okay. doing it, yes. I just, I have a lot. Um, like I say, with this dual degree, mm -hmm. it's different things that come my way. I mm -hmm. just came from St. Bart's, um, Wonderful. an island. Yes, I cooked for actually an ex-baseball player and his mm -hmm. wife, the Scots. Um, so they flew you in. Right. And you went and cooked in a beautiful tropical environment. Oh, my goodness. It was, it was just like, it, it was so nice. Mm. At one point, I even like had tears. Like, and I, I'm not even a punk like that. I'm like, oh god, I'm just feeling all crazy because I just felt like, you know, things are really looking up when you mm -hmm. don't have a vision. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you, but you know, you're going somewhere and you're not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. It's like to finally be somewhere and yeah, and to work hard at it. And I proved myself. And I very, I've been very loyal and honest mm -hmm. and. It's taken a while because I work mm -hmm. at a golf course as well. Okay. So those are some of the members at the golf course. That's a good way to network. Exactly. A great way to network. Right. And I've been there eight years, but mm -hmm. I've just, it's just come around in full circle where a lot of the members are starting to get things from me and have me come over. And so things pay off. You just, it takes persistence. Mm -hmm. It takes honesty, integrity. And you always want your name to be flawless, and, I, and your name that way. My name can be over here, and it can be my name is good over here, and, and I physically can be here. You know what so I'm saying? I, I, you have this uh, the, the spiritual energy Thank that you. you give off, and a lot of times I, I I think how food tastes has a lot to do with the person that's cooking it. What do you think? Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, I know when you go on my website, you'll see that I have a recipe there for uh, what I call a cup of passion, a cup of love. Without that, <clears throat> your food is, it's not gonna be good. And people, mm -hmm. and actually on a bad day, you can tell when a chef mm -hmm. is having a bad day. Really? Yes, the food will taste totally different, especially if you're dealing with that chef. Uh -huh. But if, if, if we get off and it's like terribly off, the food will not taste the same because it has to come from here. One thing about being in the culinary world, you get more praise than ever, and it's legitimate praise. It's not like you have to do something for this. You're gonna accomplish right. it. It's rare that somebody's gonna be like, this is disgusting. If you know what you're yeah. doing, you got it. And a lot of us, we have that in our blood. This is in us, you know what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of us, it definitely is passed down, you know, it, it's things that come through our generations that are passed down through us, and we just don't know. 
Wow. You you have generations like my father, he cuts hair. Uh huh. My brother cut hair. My oldest son is a fireman, but he cuts hair. Wow. So it, it's in the bloodline too. It's certain things that maybe if we pull out and understand what we have, the talents that we have and work off those, things will just, they'll flow for you. So that moment in St. Bart's, when you felt a little overwhelmed, could you, could you feel the ancestors? Could you feel them in that moment? I think that a lot of times I get a feeling mm -hmm. of the energy from the past, mm -hmm. um, even through some of my negative experiences. Really? Yeah, just to reiterate what not to do. Right. And even even if it's not maybe uh, the the physical energy itself, mm -hmm. just the power of knowing what was what used to be and how it can't go or how it should go. When you take that energy and you move forward with it. Exactly. You don't I, look back. Don't look back. Every day is the first day of your life. So tomorrow, I, I tell it, I, I speak sometime at schools. Um, I deal with Duchess, the tattoo artist as okay. well sometimes. Look, she's, just, she's dropping names yeah. again. Okay, <laughs> Duchess. Yes, Okay. she's here in Charlotte. And the, that show is, what is it, Black Ink? Black Ink, Black yes. Ink. So um, we have spoken at Turning Point Academy, and I definitely- well, what's Turning Point Academy? Turning Point is a school here, it's an alternative school here in Charlotte. Uh -huh. And um, just my life <clears throat> has definitely taken some changes growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I went through some things as a little girl. So I definitely can relate when it comes to children going through things and you're getting older and you're getting confused and you don't understand what love is, you don't understand how to love yourself, you don't know what to do, where to go, who to turn to. So I enjoy speaking to the children there at Turning Point. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely let them know, you know, every day is the first day of your life. Tomorrow you have a chance to reiterate and do everything all over again. You know do what I'm saying? Different. Yes, and you, you can- you, Reboot. Right, right, right. And um, they definitely has, have taken well to the point where a lot of them went back to their home schools mm -hmm. when we went and spoke to them the last time. Duchess gave them a pep rally for the first time. Wow. So just, just my thing is where I came from and I had no clue where I would end up, sometimes I'm just helping a lot of people to just, just kind of go with the flow. Go with your energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The energy says a lot. And it, so it's more than the food. Oh, yes. So it sounds like you have a, a, a much bigger platform than, than standing there in the kitchen. Yes, you know? yes. Okay, so now in, if you could just pick anything, you could just, you start, you know, you're talking about directing that energy and you're telling everybody they can reboot every day. What is it you're, you're, you want to do next? Because it seems like you're knocking those goals off. Um, my next goal would be to, I would like to have a facility and in that facility, at some point I want to teach classes. Like that is like really in my near future because I have Have you ever of, been an instructor? Yes, I have been an assistant to the instructors at Central Piedmont. In so, addition to your dual degrees. Exactly. And your business. Yes, yes. And also mother. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Right. Cool. Exactly. And doing the personal chef stuff, teaching too. Yes. I have actually um, taught some classes on North Graham to help the special needs be self-sufficient. Really? Yes, I started that. Their their grant money has to come back around for mm -hmm. me. But um, that was really interesting because, you know, these two, these well, these are adults, uh -huh. and they are very amazing. You know what I'm saying? And if and like I say, if you can find certain passions, and so even though they have a challenge in one area, everybody like to eat. <laughs> Everybody does. Right, so it's not hard to pull them in and, you know, come on in and, you know, if you if you want this tomato cut, then I'm gonna show you how to do it. Oh, see, now I've never even heard of that. I mean, I, it makes sense that somebody teaches that class. So, I mean, how did you even get into that opportunity to work with people with special needs and teach them how to cook? Where did that come from? Was that the spirit? Um, yeah. hey, Chef Mona, <laughs> yeah, right. we got something for you to do over right. here. Well, I actually was at one of Dutch's events because uh -huh. she does giving back every month. Uh -huh. So we were there and um, somebody mentioned to me, one of the, uh, from the facility, the ladies, they mentioned about me perhaps coming over and um, teaching the special needs. And I mentioned to them that I grew up with special needs because my mom, had she taught special needs. So a lot of times she would bring Down syndrome to our house and mm -hmm. spend the night and do their hair. 
So I was just really excited. They're like my favorite ones, Down Syndrome. Like mm -hmm. I get all excited. And, it, and once again, you're, the legacy yes. of what's there running through your veins and exactly. answering what this energy is telling you. Right. So when you walk into a classroom, I've, I've never seen that. So is there a special classroom? The kids come in, the, you're more like adults? Yeah, they are adults. Uh -huh. And so when they come in, I um, introduce myself. And then to get them rolling, I teach them to sing Roll, Roll, Roll Your Boat while they're washing their hands. So to give them a good 60 seconds on the wash and, okay. you know, and that way they can, everything I teach them, you can go home and do it. Right. So when you're at home, this is what you should do. Roll, it's roll, roll your roll boat. Roll your boat. Right. Get your hands clean. <laughs> exactly. That's where we start. Clean hands. Exactly. That's okay. And then once we do that, we take the uh, fruit or veggies and wash those off and mm -hmm. We just go from there. I make an itemized list of everything that we're going to do before I get there. So we already know the steps that we're going through. I type up recipes and they also get certificates. Wow. That is that is very cool. And not only the fact that you're giving back like that. And you know, it is part of your legacy. It's it's the also opening up the the information to people because a lot of people want to be chefs they want to right. deal with food but there are a lot of things that we don't know that you can do besides stand in the kitchen you can be an instructor yes you can do work with people with special needs you can do this private catering you can do food truck service food truck yes food truck right and now have you ever done the food truck thing I haven't I would like a food truck at some point mm -hmm. um, but I I have not actually physically worked on a food truck um we had does anyone in your family does anyone else in your family oh my do grandmother food my grandmother had a food truck wait a minute yes. which grandma this is grandma hannah this grandma was years hannah. ago in atlanta and she actually like sold when what year are you talking about this i wasn't even born so, so it was like in the 70s before this is how legacies come along wow. you know what i'm saying and and it's up to some of us to pick it up which the thing about grandma hannah uh -huh. Most of her children cook, even the boys. Really? Yes. She adopted my mom, mm. but her, the entire squad, even the grandkids, everybody, pretty much all of us cook and pretty <laughs> much all of us, well, a lot of us are dealing with celebrities right now in, in the type fields that we are doing. Between the cooking and the hair? Yes. Well, yes, we have the hair and then we also have another one of my cousins, she does similar to what I do, but mm -hmm. she does more of like the candy tables. Okay. So she does. And that's very popular, weddings right. and things like that. Yeah, so she's she's really popular in Atlanta. So it's just, it's really cool to just all of us have this energy and, and we, we encourage each other. We're not stepping on toes. If we mm -hmm. hear something that one could benefit from, we let each other know. And, and make everybody grow. Everybody benefits. Everybody moves right. forward. Uh, but I just think it's so cool because you've touched on your granddaddy with the chicken feet. Yes, He's yes. already getting that protein poke broth. Salad, right? Poke salad on the ground, too. <laughs> poke salad? Poke salad. Now, what's poke salad? Is that like dandelion salad? Um, it is. It's sort of like collard greens. Collard greens. Or maybe kale. Kale. But, it, you know, it grows in the south. Uh -huh. And it's typically um, around peop the edge of people's houses. But they have, like, this stalk, like rhubarb, uh -huh. rhubarb stalk. Uh -huh. And, and your granddaddy was doing My grandfather would cut. There's a lot of families that do that with the poke salad, though. But you have to cook it right or you'll get sick. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Well, we definitely want to get that. Apparently, you've got some recipes and a, a book inside of you, as well as this, <laughs> this family business. Um, so, Chef Mona Arnold, if somebody's sitting there right now and they want to be like you, they want to take this energy and, 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 and make something happen, or they want to be a chef, what, what words of advice do you have to make the first start because that's the hardest part i would say that to make the first step in anything in your life mm -hmm. a lot of times we are what keeps us or inhibited us from making that first step is things that a lot of our past a lot of convoluted energy is stuck somewhere so the first thing to do is let a lot of things go and that means forgiving a lot of people who you thought you should never forgave. Mm -hmm. it, it means letting a lot of the negative energy go and be willing to accept that positive energy in. Because you have to make room. Yes, you, you do. You gotta make room for it. You definitely do. Well, what if, what if somebody feels like, I mean, how do you let go? Oh, I forgive you. Is it that simple? No, it's definitely not that simple. The, um, the process is- Do you write? Do you call them? What do you do? 
Um, it, it depends on the person that you're dealing with because mm -hmm. every situation is different. Mm -hmm. Some people might not answer the phone for you to call them, mm -hmm. but what you can do is you can write a letter, you can send it off, you can get it out. Make sure you get it off your chest. I'm writing a book about my life as well. Really? Yes, and well, I have somebody writing the book for me. I, wrote, I started writing it mm -hmm. years ago and um, one of my ex boyfriends messed up the computer so that I didn't have the book, which is cool. Uh -huh. oh. It's cool because you can't take you this. you let go of that negative energy. Yes, and yes. the thing of it is the book is being recreated and even better this time. Mm -hmm. But when you start to write things down and you let it out, mm -hmm. it's out in the universe. It's no longer a part of you. So you let it out and, and you let it go and you forgive and then you start to build on yourself and, and work on yourself and not selfishly, mm -hmm. humbly. Humbly. Yes. So you're not, Chef Money, you're not just feeding stomachs. No. You're not just feeding appetites. Souls. You're feeding souls. Yes. You are feeding souls. Yes. That's what I'm talking Thank about. Thank you. You know, and I see, we thought we were going to talk about cookies, <laughs> but we're talking about energy and that, and, and, and uh, that, that voice, that, that spirit that's in you. So you, you might have some preacher up in you too, as well as <laughs> chef, entrepreneur. So once again, the name of your company, Exclusive Delights, what's the website? How do you spell it again? It is www.exclusive with an X. With an X. X-C-L-U-S-I-V-E. And on Delights. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that is it Chef Mona Arnold? Chef Mona Arnold. Uh, Mona, like... Mona Lisa uh -huh. and okay. Arnold. Like, like Mona the, Lisa. The big head kid, <laughs> the cartoon sexy kid. Sexy chef. No, the sexy chef. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's been amazing talking to you. Thank you. You've given us some really, really encouraging words and so many lessons there. So listen, if you sit at a house, you got a dream, you want to go back to school, you don't have to have it all figured no. out. No, go, go. But let go of the negative energy. Right. Listen to your spirit. Make room in there. Yes. And, and if I just want to be a better chef, be a better cook, what, what, just what have I got to do? Just one thing. I can just go in and be better. Like my husband would be like, that was delicious. If you don't know how to cook, but uh -huh. you want to, the best thing to start doing is following recipes. Follow, follow the recipes follow directions. to the exact, especially <laughs> baking. But this is a thing, too. When you go on Google and you find recipes, uh -huh. a lot of times you don't know if that recipe is going to work. Because right. you still have people that have put things out there and because they know how to do it or like me, I don't really measure. Mm -hmm. So for me to write a book, it's going to take meticulousness. So with that being said, go to always go to the bottom of the recipe, like on Google uh -huh. and read the reviews. Oh. So that way you can get more. You can get more out of, you know, just in case people somebody. People say, did it work? Did it taste exactly. good? Too much salt? That kind of thing. Exactly. They'll let you know at the bottom of the feed what, what to do and what not to do. So that's that's some advice okay. to definitely. So get some good recipes, look right. at the reviews, but more importantly, give me that recipe for success, for good food, for that you have on your website. What's that again? It is full of love, love, passion, passion, and I need some help. I think. <laughs> Let's see, love, passion, talent. Talents definitely need talent. And at CPCC education exactly it's all exactly there. it's all there and it's a recipe for success i mean it, you have no choice but not to be successful especially when you put this into it and we see that you're putting it in there thank you chef mona arnold thank you we're gonna be following you at exclusive delights if you want to know more about the chef make sure you follow her and make sure you come back to community focus i'm cheryl girl this amazing woman chef mona <laughs> arnold i, I can thank see you. you on tv honey it's coming <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your time and thank you for tuning in Community Focus and Access 21. Sweet.